A different perspective, a new insight into life, a nugget of positivity and a hidden truth, and maybe an amusement for you. Welcome to From My Standpoint, a twice a month podcast with your host, Josh C. Jones. Hey, I appreciate you tuning in again to From My Standpoint. I'm your host, Josh C. Jones. If this is your first time listening, then I thank you for tuning in. And if it's not, well, thank you for coming back. And don't forget that if you prefer to read, I suggest you check out the blogs at FromTheirStandpoint.com. That's from T-H-E-I-R Standpoint.com. Click on Blogs and My Show From My Standpoint, where I will sometimes add links and some extra information that may not be in the podcast. All right, so let's get into this episode, because in this episode, I want to share with you a story about something that, well, I'm sure we've all experienced at least once in our lives. (laughs) And when I look back at it, you know, now it does make me laugh. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, at that time, though, it was a major head scratcher. I mean, for a lack of better verbiage... It was very weird. Yeah, kind of like that. (laughs) But first, I must say that this episode will be split into two parts. Yes, one, ah, ah, two, ah, ah, parts. Hope you got that reference. But um, I thought this might be better since I know some people like stories and some people like to just hear the history and information. Also, if you like one part better than the other, this makes it easier for you to share that part you like, such as part one, the story, or part two, the history and information, with all the people that you know. Share. Share. Hmm. The first part is the story in which the weird thing happened. The hateful names and words were spit, and it seemed that all fact, technicalities, context, and reason were non-existent. The second part is where things are broken down even more. Further context is added. You know, context, what we miss in our everyday lives and all our stories and in all the media. And where definitions and history comes in. That is, some of the history that explains better what was thrown around in the story. But there are good lessons and things to be learned in both episodes, so I do hope you listen to both part one and part two. Now, like I said, the history part in part two is just to give a clear context to the story I will tell and to better inform you so that you can make your own more informed conclusions. Because as the saying goes, you know, those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So, with that said, let's just delve into my mind and review a story from the past and find a hidden truth and, hopefully, an ounce of positivity. What is this place? Where am I? Why do your thoughts echo in your head like that? Moving on, random voice of questions. So, have you ever been on the receiving end of hateful, derogatory, and insulting remarks? What am I saying? Of course, everyone most likely has at some point or another in their life, especially in the age and culture that we live in now where everyone is always complaining and offended by everything. So I am sure everyone can answer yes to this. And when we were, or are, I would almost bet that these hateful, derogatory, or insulting remarks most likely came from someone who has a differing opinion, belief, experience, or perception, which usually comes from having a different foundation than you or I. Now, also, as a side note here, how how many of you have received these same hurtful and derogatory remarks from someone in your own circle? How about in your own echo chamber. We all have our perceived safe zones where we run to and intently listen in, where our beliefs, our perceptions, our opinions and wishes and desires and biases are reinforced, unchecked, 
and where our only validation for trust in someone is for them to speak what we want to hear and to validate our opinion. That we do, random voice of reason. That we do. Now, I remember a time many, many, many years ago when I was in a conversation that turned into a debate with someone on social media about a hot topic at the time. Well, obviously we did not see eye to eye on everything. And in case you're wondering, this is where the part of the brief story begins. But like I said, we did not see eye to eye on everything. However, there was one point where we actually did completely agree. Whoa! <laughs> I know, right? Common ground. Who knew? But this was not the interesting and surprising aspect of the whole conversation. People can almost always find something to be in agreement with in most any conversation or debate if they are willing to be honest, truthful, and listen. Hmm, that we can, random voice of reason. But no, no. What interested and surprised me was the actions taken immediately after I mentioned to this person that I completely agreed with them on a particular point. When was it? What happened? <laughs> if it weren't for you, random voice of questions, I would have no one to lead me into the next part. Thank you. Well, what happened was I was verbally attacked by this same person. It's kind of confusing and weird sometimes, you know, that some people find it hurtful, devastating, insulting, offensive, or whatever if someone who holds a differing opinion, belief, experience, perception, view, or foundation actually agrees with them on something. That sounds very dumb. Why would someone be upset if someone agreed with them? <laughs> it surely does, random voice of questions, but... I don't know. Who truly knows? I only have thoughts here. So maybe it has to do with a sense of superiority. If you agree with them, then they no longer appear superior to you in their perceived knowledge and understanding. Or maybe it has to do with a feeling of supremacy. If you agree with them, they no longer hold an attribute of enlightenment over you. Or, you know, maybe they just like to argue. And by agreeing with them, <laughs> you threw them off their game. But like I said, who truly knows? Interestingly enough, though, this has happened many times to me. Not too long ago, maybe, I don't know, a year, two, three years ago, I joined a conversation online in regards to certain words being used and what they actually mean. Once again, I agreed. However, this time, I agreed with both sides. One used one word, the other used another word, but they were both talking about the same group, though. Both words, as I explained to them, based on the words definition and meaning to the topic and discussion, were accurate and technically correct. Well, as you can imagine, that got the ball rolling even further with the name calling. But no, not just among the two participants in the original debate, which is now seen as an argument, but toward me as well. I mean, how dare I agree with someone who disagrees with the person who is trying to shame me for agreeing with them and the person they are disagreeing with? What? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was a major head-scratcher for sure. Well, it wasn't long before one of them invoked their supremacy, their superiority, their angered opinion, belief, experience, perception, and view of me and labeled me a term that has actually been turned into an adage by Mike Godwin with its own name, Godwin's Law. It states, and I quote, As an online discussion grows longer, the probability of a comparison involving Nazis or Hitler approaches one, end quote. This went from zero to whoa so fast it took me back a bit. <laughs> and in the words of the immortal Ron Burgundy, Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. When were the words that started all this crazy nonsense? I will tell you, random voice of questions. The words were, now brace yourself here, the words were illegal 
and undocumented. When talking politics, it is best to remember it is often less about agreement or persuasion and more about power, schemes, and a haughty self-ascribed feeling of enlightenment. Mm, sure, we can go with that random voice of reason. Well, back to the story here. Essentially, they told me, and not in the nicest of ways, mind you, that any person who uses the word illegal to describe another is a Nazi, and that the word illegal was invented by Nazis to dehumanize and make it easier to kill kids, to kill babies, and to kill other people. Now, I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that that word was not invented by the Nazis, and I'm also pretty sure that using the word does not automatically equate someone to immediately become a Nazi. Well, the short version was, I mentioned that both people were technically correct. I mentioned that those entering the country through illegal means are an undocumented person, since they are in the country without legal documentation, and they are illegal since they crossed into the country illegally. I said that both people were technically correct with their terminology. Shut up! Yeah. <laughs> They, um, yeah, they stated some other offensive and hateful comments toward me, which I will not repeat on here, but this did help me decide that I needed to clarify my answer a bit more, because again, you know, who knows, maybe they just misunderstood what I was writing in there, because it's easy to misunderstand text and comments when you can't hear the tone or the inflection of the voice, and... Really, you're just deciphering it based on your perception anyway. So I said, legal means permitted by law. Illegal means forbidden by law, which is not allowed. So something not allowed is illegal. Thus, if a person enters a country illegally and stays illegally, they are then not allowed or forbidden by law to be in that country. They are undocumented and illegal. Well, their debate was on technicalities, you know, on the actual meanings and definitions of words. At least that's what I thought it was on when I joined it. But I learned a very valuable lesson that day, that truth, facts, and technicalities mean nothing if feelings are involved. And like I, I like to say, especially when feelings are viewed as the most championed asset. Oh, and boy, did I hear it. Well, read it is more accurate, since it was through social media comments. Darn those technicalities and facts. And how dare I agree with both sides, right? Uh, yeah. Well, I found out feelings were the main deciding factor here, which, like I said, I wish I knew before I joined that discussion. I say discussion because I thought it was a discussion. A debate is what it later showed these two were actually having, and an argument is what it eventually became. Wait a moment there. What's the difference between a debate and a discussion? That is a good question, random voice of questions. It's a little off topic, but it's a good question, and I'll answer it because I think it's good to answer. And, well, really, I have not heard anyone explain it better and in more simpler terms than Daniel Meisler, he says it best in his blog, The Difference Between Discussion and Debate. And he says, and I quote, In a debate, you lose if you change your mind. In a discussion, you lose if one or both parties don't learn something, either about how the world works or at least about the other person's perspective. End quote. You know, I really like that. I want to say that again. In a debate, you lose if you change your mind. In a discussion, you lose if one or both parties don't learn something, either about how the world works, or at least about the other person's perspective. Well, back on track. Anyway, with this new understanding in mind, I said, it's the subjective that makes one feel one or the other term is wrong. Die! <laughs> oh, yep, here we go again. It pretty much turned that bad that fast. So, you know, you might as well just let the snowball roll. It's already going down the hill. So this led to even more name-calling from them. And those opposing their view, they called racist and Nazi, 
again, along with some other terms. So I mentioned and repeated that even though we all fall into this trap sometimes, calling a person or group of persons, especially on subjective thinking and without support at facts and truth, names such as bigots, racist, Nazis, Hitler, deplorables, hacks, phobic, etc., because they have a differing opinion, belief, experience, perception, or view, is prejudice and, in essence, dehumanizing. I also said that name-calling, especially when based on the subjective, is no way to convince anyone of anything. It just shuts both sides down and ends the discussion or debate you are having. Well, thinking about it, I guess it could be accepted in an argument, but I think it would also shut down any productive aspects that might come out of the argument as well. Well, when we use these terms, you know, any derogatory or insulting or intentionally hateful term to label another, we change the whole focus of the discussion or debate from what is being said. That is, we change it from the topic actually in discussion or debate to the word and its perceived connotation. And in doing so, we have shown to the other person and anyone who happens to be reading or listening to the discussion or debate that we do not value them or anything they are saying or believe or perceive. Now, I think that this oftentimes signifies a preconceived prejudice that the person has no intention of rectifying. Well, in the end, I was informed and reminded multiple times by this person that because I agreed with both of them, well, you know, technicalities and facts, let me be more precise here. I believe it's because I did not agree with this one person wholeheartedly. They reminded me and informed me that I was stupid, racist, and a Nazi. So, with that in mind, if you don't mind listening to or reading the blog of a mislabeled and an absolute erroneous accusation by this person, then I encourage you to listen to I Did Not See That Coming, Part 2, where we will dive into some definitions, some history, and check the validity or invalidity of this person's accusations together. If you have not yet subscribed, I encourage you to subscribe to From My Standpoint to ensure you receive a reminder when new episodes are released. You can follow me on Facebook at FM Standpoint, on Instagram at From My Standpoint, or visit the website www.fromtheirstandpoint.com. That's from T H E I R standpoint.com and click on my show From My Standpoint. And now, what you've all been waiting for. It's the wisdom of Dad Joke. We will all be involved in discussions, debates, and yes, sometimes even arguments. There is no avoiding this in life. But in those times, we have a choice. We can choose to control our emotions and feelings and allow the truth and facts to be presented. And we can speak honestly and truthfully with one another. If we choose, and if we desire to truly find any common ground or make any lasting positive and true change. Yes, we may falter from time to time, and our emotions may get the better of us. But we don't have to be like the frog and hop to negativity and hate and defamation just to prove to ourselves that we are enlightened, and that we have more lives than a cat while at the same time watching our character croak every day. This has been From My Standpoint, a podcast to find a nugget of positivity and a hidden truth, encouraging and enlightening insight, entertaining a new perspective, and providing an amusement for you. We hope you were entertained, encouraged, enlightened, and enjoyed the show.